If you take a road trip through the American Deep South and decide to stop for gas, you might see some big alligators, but you'll hear some even bigger accents. This ain't the same thing as you hear every single day when you turn on your radio. He's dead right, I did not find these on the radio. I searched the mountains, the beaches, the bayous to find the most intriguing American accents of all. And all I'm going to say is that gator is the least of your worries. So can you guess these accents? It's a challenge. Let's find out. We heard the weather siren go off and um, I got the girls, we got in the hallway and Brian had walked to the back and opened the door and he heard it. Well, isn't that an amazing accent? I've been told the biggest difference between the Southern accents is that they either speak with a Southern drawl or a Southern twang. Anyone know the difference? Actually, Joey kind of sent me then in the direction of we were looking for another potter. I found his son-in-law who was a potter who owned property right over there. I call them chiggers. Uh, you also get them in if you're in the woods yeah. this time of the year. Yeah. And some people call them red bugs. Really, I don't know the difference between a chicken and a red bug. To me, they both hurt. Well, here we have a classic southern drawl. Pretty relaxed sounding, don't you think? A drawl just means that the vowels are pronounced kind of long and sound like they're split into two syllables. This accent goes all the way back to the Scots-Irish settlers, and then plantation life had a huge impact on the evolution. You hear some strong African-American sounds in there too. Well, I talk the way I do because the good Lord blessed me with this accent. I like it. I like it just fine. Amazing. Well, the deepest deep south is where you hear the strongest accents of all, but it definitely depends on which neck of the woods you're in. Do y'all not realize how silly y'all look accusing me of faking an accent? Just because I have all my teeth in my head and I'm not married to my brother doesn't mean I can't qualify for a southern accent. But where are we exactly? Well, let's get out of the woods for the last clue. I got a granddaddy and a mama and a granny and a papa. So I got all, they could never have the same. You got them all covered, huh? Yep. Where I'm from, there's nothing there. We had, all we had to do was ride dirt roads and we'd go to pastors. And then I had a little alt to my car. And one time my dad got so mad because I did donuts in the pastor of my alt to my car and it caught on fire. Here comes the reveal. It is the accent of the one and only Alabama. And by the way, guys, in case you can't tell, I am not personally from the American Deep South, far from it. So if I do get anything wrong in this video, please let me have it in the comments. All feedback is welcome and appreciated. He worked in, in, in the field a while, but he played music in slavery time. Had him and old man Milton Brace for the fiddle player. Still that guy with the red dress on, little Eliza Jane. Don't you say what show you want? Well, I hope I'm not outright giving it away here, but I can't resist. This state is known for its rich blues heritage, and the singer is a great example of how the accents have been shaped by the music and culture. Seriously, music has superpowers when it comes to preserving the way people speak. You can probably name a few legends yourself. Just like Alabama, you get that deep south rhythm even in speaking. I don't care about the budget. I'm going to go out. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to travel. If the money's in the account and the bills are paid, we're doing it, all right? I'm I'm new to this whole posting videos thing, but uh, I hope y'all enjoy at least hearing me talk or something like that, but uh, I appreciate it. Of course, like all over the South, there is more than one way to talk. Please, please don't ever talk to me like this, and I'm fixing to do it in a fake Southern accent. The one they use in the movies, they one like, the one like they do on Steel Magnolias. Trust me. Crazy. I am pleasant. I just saw drum eating in this morning at the Piggly Wiggly and I smiled. I'll be honest, I would not know the difference. Can you guys hear what's real and what's fake? Either way, it's an accent that I just love. And you'll hear it down in Mississippi. If you got it right, go buy yourself a blues harp. This night is about to catch fire. We're all kin somewhere, ain't we, Dean? Yeah. Huh? A long line, yeah. I'd say me and you are too on the light side. Oh yeah, me and your kin. Dad's telling me how much kin I, I see him at the funeral home at night. He's telling me how much kin me and you are. Well, we kin on your mom and on your grandma. Let's see. Your accent comes from the people who you hear speak the most. And if you live in the mountains all your life, you will naturally learn speech that is quite unique. And you hear it sung in the incredible blues, rock and soul. Lots of warm and friendly mountain folk out here. Although they probably regret that they've been discovered, if you ask me. Mostly just mind your own business and let everybody else mind their business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't be left alone. 
Let us do our thing, we let you do your thing. This place has the most documented caves in the US, more than 8,000 of them. Hopefully nothing lives in there, but if you know much about moonshine, you probably know a certain legend from these parts, and I'm gonna keep him for uh, until you've given up guessing. You might wanna fetch your whiskey glass while you wait. Meanwhile, here is a guy who prefers the water side. I've been a lot of places when I was in the Marine Corps by a gosh and drove a truck, and I ain't never been nowhere that didn't wanna come back. I like it. Wouldn't live nowhere else. I, me and a friend of mine, we, we garden a good bit, plant a lot of sweet corn to sell, taters, other stuff. They say that in the East people sound more Appalachian and in the West it's more Deep South, but I still can't place this woman. Can you? My little mom and daddy never said ugly words, ever, until my sister was going to marry a little later in life and she was going to marry this hooty do man. But if you want to hear the best accent of all, how about we see a guy about some moonshine? Anything that I've ever used to make liquor out of. Sugar, meal, <coughs> rye, barley, whatever. The jars it's put in, I think it's my business if I want to make it. I bought it and I figure what's mine is mine. If you haven't guessed yet, there's probably no hope. But try this. I was told to listen for a shh sound on the S's. Should we see if it's true? They had a bear in a cage. You know, we're famous for the bears and the Smokies. And people would stop at this market. They would buy Cokes for this bear. Ah, uh, it's definitely true. And now you know where we've been this whole time. Tennessee. Another fun sound is the click of these buttons. You should definitely try it out because if you subscribe to this channel, you'll also get your name in the hat for a giveaway of one of my famous language books. Which book exactly? Well, keep watching and you'll see. Why would TikTok assume that I'm saying Sprite bean roll instead of what I was actually saying, which is Sprite Zero? I get it. Cornbread is a hard accent to understand. They have horse racing, they have steamboats, they have baseball, and they have bourbon. Good on them, but that's all in the cities. Out here in the mountains, it's a whole other story. Put some lingo in the area. You ain't lying. Man after sentence is big too. Come on, man. Like that. Like, man, come on, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Should we go shooting? Yeah, we're gonna go shoot. It's a small town, you don't have much in it, but you know, it goes off a lot. What's all that pain going on? Been working on this place for a long time. You trying to rehab it? No, man. It looks like it's beyond hope. It is beyond hope. Poorest county in America, by the way. But the accent that lives in these small rural towns is completely surrounded by beautiful rolling hills, dense forests, sparkling lakes, and the people have a strong connection to the land and traditions. George going up and down, you see what I'm saying? He walks straight back and forth. He does not side to side on that bull crap. He goes straight. If you want to build his legs, build him straight. That's his natural movement. And religion, you, you keep in your heart and your head, you'll still be, do better than average. You know, don't listen to the man. I think that was about a rooster, maybe. Well, this accent is also known to accompany bluegrass music. How's that for a great clue? Hi, I'm Chuck Ford. I was just having an argument with the boy up road about who has the bigger trailer. It's me. You ever have a day where you just feel beautiful? I don't know if you can hear him or not, but. There's sand hill cranes over there. Sometimes you just gotta stop and appreciate nature. Turns out the further south you go, the stronger the accent gets. People say the smooth moonlight magnolia drawl is quite recognizable. It's a mix of southern and midwestern tones which came about from contact with the English via commerce in the 18th and 19th century. But it was stigmatized as an improper way to talk, so it's actually leveled out a lot since then. Funny how we change our accents to please others. We really shouldn't. Anyway, want to learn some words? We got guitar. Number two, we got water. Number three, we got a swamp donkey. Number four, we got skedaddle. Got you there, but not all accents from this area sound the same, and the cities have their own thing. You can't keep on putting the people down in the hood, because the people you see on TV today might be just from the hood. Yes, sir. And, uh, and Shepherd Square has produced a whole bunch of people from the hood. I can't name them all, but there's going to be a calendar made, and I'll have these people's birthday on there as a calendar of the great people that come out the hood. Now, I have a question for you. How do you handle tricky accents when you're learning a new language? This can be really challenging.
challenging. I'm not being a jerk. You guys just don't know what it's like to be a young Southern man reading a book and be like, mm, all right, if that's how that's spelled, I've been saying it wrong. That is. Well, that's a good reason right there to make sure that you can also read whatever you are hearing. And if you want to get ahead faster, try reading short stories. Short stories work incredibly well. And the best part is that you can read them in any accent you want. If you're the lucky subscriber who wins a book, you can choose any one of these. We've got 17 languages here. Have you figured out where we are yet? Yeah, I've been to Chicago, Florida, Georgia. Mm -hmm. You know, places like that. But I, I didn't like the city life. I stayed in Chicago five years, but I worked up there. But yeah. make big money, we spent big money. Yeah. There ain't no yeah. place like home. Where is home? It's a gorgeous place with unpredictable weather. Kentucky. So where are we going, Gary? What you mean, where are we going? You got me spraying out in this hot ass weather. I don't know what she's talking about. Gary, you know what I'm talking about. What you sent to my phone? What I send to you? Talking about some, hey, honey, I'll be there in a minute. You, sure you don't even like honey. Uh, you allergic. People are saying that when she speaks, you can hear the hood, the country, and Southern Belle all at once. And that's the kind of interesting accent I just love. But perhaps you've heard it done more like this. The sky is about to fall out. This is north of IT and in rain. Woo! Man, you better hold on to them consoles. This stage is actually really special. It has two very specific dialects that are different from everything else in the video. Yep, I said dialects. Ready for some clues? We're about to totally lose the drawl. Sometimes we started a conversation in French and finished in English. Sometimes we get it started in English and finish it in French. We go back and forth. There's a lot of deep swamp here known as Bayou Country. And with the wild swamps come a million of these guys and some fascinating accents. Not a million. Nobody around here thinks they got an accent. They say, look at that guy, he got an accent. I might buy me a house somewhere and doing like that there, but I ain't gonna never leave from uptown. It's where I know, you know. Native Americans have lived here for more than a thousand years, but a long time ago, mid 1700s, a bunch of French speakers were exiled here from Canada for not bowing down to the crown the rebels. So now you have these little pockets of French speakers surviving in certain places. I got a friend who's got a, a chicken farm, great big chicken farm. But when he started out, it wasn't big, no. So what he do is he started with just a few chicken and they haul up there and he, he built a, a black stop road by his house. Next thing, there were German and Irish immigrants, Africans, Caribbeans, Spanish from the Canary Islands. No wonder they speak the way they do. They were four cents a pound wow. for the black one. The green one, we had to put that in the water to let it kill itself. And later on, we go back and put it on one pile. And about three, three or four weeks later, we had to come back and turn it dead. They turn black. What an awesome accent. They can only be Cajuns. Now, Cajuns speak a unique kind of French, so naturally their English has a spicy Cajun flavor too. If you call yourself American, you have to know where we are. It is gumbo and Mardi Gras country. Good old Louisiana. And you would not get that, but if you're not into spicy, I have some sugar just for you. I'm an advocate of being proud of where you're from, so let me just paint you a picture of how country the country is. I know a grown man by the name of Pee Wee, and nobody knows his government name. I grew up going to tractor pulls. This is where everybody bring their tractor and see how far they could pull stuff. I used to see how many grasshoppers I could catch in a jar. One time I got 24. Can you hear the sweetest sound she has? Down this end of the world, you still get a deep drool, but it's softer, practically dripping with southern molasses. When Morgan Wallen said some people like to make a little fun of the way I talk, I'll be dang. I felt that. Because half of y'all are steady making fun of me, and half of y'all are weirdly obsessed with the way I talk. Plum dad gum raggedy. Well, I guess those tea drinking Franciscan monks in the 1500s can be blamed for all the sweetness. But bad news. They say the classic accent has been fading more and more and going in the direction of a California accent. Unless you're in this city, they have their own thing going on. Uh -huh. Like that, you won't you won't understand what I'm saying when I just say that to you. There's like five words in one. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you either, I can't give away the lingo though. That's the crazy part about it, but it's like five words in one when I just told you like, eh. And I just have to mention a zombie apocalypse somewhere, which apparently all goes down right here. So if you wanna survive, better make the right friends. And with that outrageous clue, I shall leave you the answer. We are in the Peach State, Georgia. We are almost at the one that's so hard, maybe two of you will get it. But first, my favorite. 
we got water in the in the man trip we was riding. We was in the back of it, and that water was uh, 12 breaks of water backed up. And it just blowed that coal out just like a explosion, you know. Go cool, on, rewind that and try again. It's okay, I did it about a million times. What an accent. Now, we might just be in twang country now. It's faster and more nasal. On this man's doorstep is some of the most rugged terrain in the country. Lots of beautiful forests for hiking, mountain biking, whitewater rafting, and singing? What do you think? You know what I mean? Say he really happy from my head down to my toes. Hard part. I'm long, 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 long now to long, long to blue. In many ways, it's a different America here. Coal mining is the center point of everything, and if you know what a holler is, then it will be an easy guess. They say things like a hunting and a going, and if it all seems a bit ancient to you, well, you're not wrong. It's one of those speech things that came with the immigrants. Can't complain about an accent that helps keep Shakespeare alive in the 21st century, right? But not everyone is so hard to understand. You be a kid down there and get in trouble down here, time you get home, you're about what? five people then called your mama saying, hey, Time you get there, they are waiting on you. Everybody, everybody knows everybody. It's not a good thing sometimes. <laughs> There's not a lot of thieving and stuff like that now, but there used to be. That, that stuff's probably, yeah. that place that come in in the 90s. Okay. Yeah, okay. Store probably, so it's gotten better in that oh, sense. Oh, yeah, it's gotten better and better and better. I've been gone a bunch of t a couple times, a few times, and uh, I always end up back. Love it. Let's try a different accent from another part of town. Back in the port, well, when the mines shut down, the country and the economy was down, people left and then the business, uh, business shut down. At one time, a person could buy anything you wanted in Welsh. If you left Welsh because you wanted to quit, all kinds of different grocery stores, cash stands, one of the most fascinating things about this legendary region is the stories. They have a tradition of passing down stories in the form of ballads, which are stories told through song. It began in Britain and traveled with the settlers to the mountains here and got all these other beautiful influences mixed in. Only difference is, in this part of the world, the stories are all true. And this is how they kept their history alive. Not in books, but in song. Come on guys, pull up your bridges and take a wild guess. What is the accent? Get on the water and enjoy a high tech scavenger hunt. Mate One is home to over 50 geocaching sites that are only reachable by river. There's so many things to experience here in Mate One that you'll need more than one day to do it. It's the only state completely within the Appalachian mountain region, the mountain state, West Virginia. How many accents was that? Now seven accents? Don't go away. My spies just told me something I have never heard in my life. By the way, the Cherokee all over this region also had a wonderful tradition of storytelling to pass down their tales and legends, which is music to my ears, because stories are exactly how we teach languages here at Story Learning. If you've never looked into it, you really should. Learning with stories is a whole new way of learning languages, and we've taught tens of thousands of students a new language using this method. It works because when you learn a language with stories, not rules, the language just sticks in your head more easily, which means you learn faster and with less stress. Anyway, if you're keen to see how it all works, you can get a free tour of the method. Just look for my story learning kit in the video description below. There's a link to click it, completely free. It will take you to the right place. Never will forget one time, my grandmother, she had up in the eighties, and she wants to see that movie, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. yeah. What, another mountain man with a beard? No, no, no. Let's find someone else, because I heard this state is so diverse, you might think you died and went to dialect heaven. Oh, well, did you see that the wind uh, moving them trees? You know, I say it blow them trees. That's how it done. And then, boy, look at the river. Look how... How high it's standing. Any clues from this? The amazing thing about this state is each geographic region has a unique dialect, but there's a special one. See if you can identify it. And a cup of Alec is actually sugar, coffee with sugar in it, you know. Juvember. Okay, that's, uh, some folks call them a slingshot, but it's just uh, what we would uh, take a, a forked branch, and cut it off, put rubber bands on it, put a rock in it, but that's a Juvember. Uh, to me, when you mama something, you like, uh, treat it bad, you like just mess over it, you know, you, you make a mess of it. The accent is mostly southern with a few vowel differences. Well, when he got halfway that little ditch on this side, mm -hmm. before it come out of the room. Well, that word was different. So who are these fascinating folk? The locals and the historians tell an incredible story of a mystery out here that has never ever been solved. A mystery that led to this accent. Oh, we're always gonna be together. 
and then we we'll, she'll get behind me and we'll walk in the same path together. <laughs> <laughs> in 1584, about 100 English people were left stranded on an island just off the coast, and they created a colony. There were big clashes with the indigenous people, so when the rescue ship finally came, they went back to England, all except 15 of them who were left behind. When the ship returned three years later to pick them up, the colony had completely vanished, and all that was left was the bones of just one person, and a mysterious message carved on a post. It's one of the great legends of American history. We got our own little slang, like coffee. I may say coffee sometime, I may say Alec, which probably half of you don't know what Alec is. Coffee. Everybody's your, hey my cousin, everybody's your cousin. And the first thing you ask somebody when you see them is, who's your people? You know, we got to find out who your people is. Cousins makes dozens, but not this cousin. I don't want none of my peeps. Well, in a century later, the mixed race descendants were discovered speaking English, with a lot of words mixed in from various tribal languages. Today, they speak English similarly to the rest of the region, but with their own interesting little twists. It's quite funny that, that y'all ain't never heard of some of the words that we say. Like Pa Daddy, Jack, I call my little boy Daddy Rab. Y'all might not know what that means, but it's just something we say. It's the one-of-a-kind accent of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. I can't wait to hear what your favourite of all these accents is, who you are hooked on now, and when your next trip down the Mississippi is going to be. Meantime, you can go on a different kind of trip in this video right over here. <laughs>